Hey guys, welcome back to my beauty stash or welcome if it is your first time here. Hello, my name is Steph. I would love to have you as a subscriber. So be sure to click on that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy watching. Today's video is all about the top 10 best and worst eyeshadow palettes that I have tried in 2021. To my knowledge, all of these palettes were released within 2021, so this is the perfect opportunity for us to talk about them, for me to narrow things down for you guys, and for us to kind of compare what we thought was the best and what was the worst, because I'm definitely gonna wanna hear from you guys in the comment section once this video is over. I will say, I will say I had a difficult time choosing both the worst and the best. The worst because I honestly didn't try that many bad palettes in 2021. And I know that might shock some of you. You guys have seen me try so many eyeshadow palettes, but for the most part, I've enjoyed the majority of the eyeshadow palettes that I tried this year. So that means these beauty brands, they're doing something right. They're listening to us and what we wanna see as far as formulation, color story wise, so on and so forth. The hardest part about picking the best palettes of 2021 was just narrowing it down to 10 because I can honestly say I've tried a lot of good eyeshadow palettes and this was this was hard. This was hard. Uh, picking the best was the hardest of the two. I am not including any honorable mentions. I want to just keep it 10 and 10. So I'm excited for today's video. I hope you guys are too. We're going to begin with the worst and end with the best. If you guys want to see what topped my list of best and worst eyeshadow palettes in 2021, keep on watching. And guys, if there's enough room in the description box, I am going to link the video that I have that corresponds with each of the eyeshadow palettes. If it doesn't fit, then I'm just going to link my eyeshadow playlist um, in a pinned comment, as well as the makeup that I am wearing today. So definitely either check the pinned comment or check the description box to links to everything. And some of those links might be affiliate links. So if you do end up shopping through them, I thank you so much for supporting me and my channel. Let's get started with the worst eyeshadow palettes of 2021. And I'm going to start with an eyeshadow palette, the only eyeshadow palette that I no longer have in my collection. And that is because I passed it along to somebody else who I knew would love it and give it an amazing home. It is this one right here from Too Faced. This is their fall release. This is the Cinnamon Swirl Eyeshadow Palette. Now, there's nothing wrong with this palette formula-wise. Formula-wise, it is a fantastic palette. Palette. The thing for me is they've done this before. They've done this so many times before. These fall releases from Too Faced are getting a bit redundant and I was really hoping for something different. They had a really great release last year with the Pumpkin Spice palette as did they before with the Gingerbread palettes. In my opinion, the Pumpkin Spice has been the best. This one, quality-wise, fantastic. I think the quality is the same as Pumpkin Spice, but the color story just didn't speak to me at all. I felt it was very boring, but for some of you out there who love neutrals and this is what you wear on a daily basis, then by all means, I think the palette is already on sale, pick it up because it is a good palette. It's just for me, this is not my color story, and that's why I'm putting it in the worst category. Next, unfortunately, is this one from Catrice. This is the Catrice Pro Slim Eyeshadow Palette, and this one is in the shade Lavender Breeze. I believe I tried this over the summer. I think it was over the summer. I was just uh, very disappointed with it. There's little to no pigmentation. It's a pretty powdery palette, and so I really had to work to get the look I was trying to accomplish. Um, it's just, it's not for me, and I want to say this palette came in at about $10, so it definitely doesn't break the bank. I love Catrice Cosmetics. Like, they make so many amazing products that I love, even skincare products that I use. But unfortunately, I've just never found a really amazing eyeshadow palette from Catrice, and this one is no different. Next up, we have... 
Urban Decay and the Prince collaboration. I think a lot of us were left wanting something more from this collection. I will say that I do think the packaging is beautiful on all of the products they release. And I did buy the entire collection, so that video will most definitely be linked so that you guys can check it out. But these are the two eyeshadow palettes that were released. Now I forget the names of each of the palettes. They each have their own name, but let's see. Let's open up this one. So here's the color story of the one with the black outer packaging. I mean, they're nice shades, but I feel like there's some overlapping like with these shades right here. And I know a lot of people were saying that this was missing vibrancy. Like the whole collection was missing that vibrance that Prince himself was, that he lived. Um, he was always such a fun, creative individual to watch. His outfits were always over the top. I mean, he was just an over the top person. I mean, talented beyond his years. And so I know a lot of people were left with something more to be desired when it came to this collection, hence the color story of the eyeshadow palettes. Um, I mean, the shadows performed well. Uh, I don't really have an issue with the quality of the eyeshadow palettes. Let me go ahead and show you the purple one. I think this palette especially had people wanting more. Uh, they definitely could have done more with the blues and the purples especially that were included in the palette. Um, some of these, I think one of these in here is like a duochrome but we definitely have better duochromes when it comes to the indie makeup brands so I can see uh, the disappointment in this collection especially from the diehard Prince fans but I do think that Urban Decay did the best they could to honor his memory. And I think the reason why they were a little more reserved when it came to the color stories and the vibrancy of the eyeshadow palettes and just the collection in general is because they wanted to appeal to a broad audience. They didn't want to just narrow it down to a certain group because let's be honest, not everybody likes to wear bright, colorful makeup. They wanted the collection, I guess, to be more wearable for everyday wear. I think, I don't know, that's just me sharing my thoughts but I definitely think they could have done more shade wise and so yeah that was a bit of a disappointment for me I still use some of the products I'm actually wearing the black uh, Kajal eyeliner today I like tight lined my upper lash line with it so I still get use out of the collection and of course I do display the box that everything came in it's a really nice collection packaging wise but I think there was definitely a missed opportunity here when it came to the shades included in the eyeshadow palettes Next we have the BH Cosmetics and Iggy Azalea collaboration. This is the Totally Plastic Collection and yeah, these palettes were terrible. The only good palette was this one right here. This is a Totally 2000s Blue Fur eyeshadow palette. And I think if you were gonna pick up any of them, uh, make it this one, but honestly, I wouldn't recommend buying any at all. And a lot of people thought it was unusual, this packaging for BH Cosmetics, because they don't typically do this type of packaging. They typically stay with the cardboard packaging, but um, these were a no-no. These were terrible. This is the worst one of the bunch. This is the uh, Purple Platforms eyeshadow palette. This palette gave me so much trouble. I mean, so much trouble. I just had way higher expectations from this collection. I remember before it came in, I watched the Nikki Tutorials um, and Iggy Azalea a video where they were using some of the items from the collection and Iggy was able to elaborate on why she chose to collaborate with BH Cosmetics and the whole idea behind everything. So I thought that was a really nice way to introduce the collection to all of us here on YouTube was to have one of the biggest YouTube stars, Nikki Tutorials, interview the actual collaborator, the music artist, Iggy, um, and her thoughts behind, you know, this whole collection. Unfortunately for me, the collection did fall short. The eyeshadow palettes were a major disappointment. I will say that the lashes are pretty good and the makeup sponge is pretty good. However, the case the makeup sponge comes in did not work for me either. I do know they're planning around round two because Iggy did tell Nikki in that video that there is going to be another collection coming out. So here's hoping that round two is going to be way better than round one. 
Next up is a ColourPop palette, and it is this one right here. This is the Sonic Bloom eyeshadow palette. This palette went to Ulta first, so I guess this was maybe one of the fall releases from ColourPop. I mean, let's be honest, they have so many releases. And the color story is nice. I mean, it's very fall inspired. It has a little pop of pink and red in there. It's okay. I, I do love the cover art, so the packaging is really pretty. Unfortunately, I felt like these shadows were a little on the powdery side, and I just didn't feel Feel like this was that great ColourPop formula that we all love and enjoy. I felt this palette could have been a little bit better quality performance wise and so that's why it finds itself in one of the worst of 2021 here in my stash. Next up is this one from Revlon. This is the Revlon uh, Slight Flex So Fierce eyeshadow palette. This is a quad and I recently reviewed this on my channel. I did a look where I was using this, actually using a full face of new Revlon makeup. Um, this palette is just okay. I mean, they're all satin shades, shimmer shades. I think there's only one matte in here and I want to say it was this one, I could be wrong. I think they're all shimmer shades. And for that reason, that's why it's finding itself in the worst category. I just feel like Revlon should have given us at least one matte shade. Maybe this one make it a matte and then let the other ones be shimmers. I know they released some more quads in this same collection. And I want to say they're all like satin or shimmer shades as well. And for me, this is something I'm definitely not going to be reaching for. And honestly, if I didn't have this YouTube channel and I wasn't trying to do a full face of Revlon makeup, I definitely would have passed on this one. Next are two eyeshadow palettes, both of them from the same collection, and if you've been watching my videos lately, this is not a shock to you. It is the Mickey Mouse and Friends collaboration with Morphe. So let's be honest, the cover art on this entire collection, the mirror especially, A+. I mean, you wanna talk about maybe some of the best cover art of 2021? I would definitely put this in that category. And I actually did include this in a video that I made that was titled, The Cutest Makeup That I Own, because let's be honest, this is really cute. But when we take a look at what is inside, Yes, we have very cool color stories, but the performance is subpar. Guys, I used to use Morphe palettes so much back in the day, like way before I had this YouTube channel, and I don't remember Morphe's quality being terrible. I feel like now, as they've gotten bigger, I feel like the quality is getting a little bit less and less, especially when it comes to eyeshadow palettes. I mean, look at this. Like, yes, it's a huge, colorful eyeshadow palette, but this is fun, especially to somebody who loves colorful makeup but the disappointing part is that these don't perform they're patchy they're powdery you really gotta build them up and it does take a while to blend them out I mean it's just a handful of shades that are good and the rest are just mediocre and for it to be so cute on the outside unfortunately it's just a disaster on the inside the only thing I would recommend from that collection is the mirror and I have the mirror I don't think you can see it but I have the mirror on display somewhere behind me and that is so, so cute. So if you have a Disney lover in your life, a Disney makeup lover at that, get them the mirror. That is the best thing out of this collection. Next, we have another ColourPop palette, and it is this one right here. This is a So Very Lovely eyeshadow palette. This was just okay. I felt like some of the shades just really, you know, didn't build up or come out the way I was expecting them to. I was really disappointed with this shade. I thought I was going to be able to build it up a bit more than what I did, and it just, no, it kind of fell short. Didn't really care for some of the shimmer shades, and I thought some of the shades were just a little too similar to each other. It's a pretty palette, like, packaging-wise. I think it's really cute. What I did enjoy from this collection were the Super Shock blushes and highlighters and stuff like that. So if you're wanting anything, because I do think it's still available on the ColourPop website, I would definitely check that stuff out and just skip out on this eyeshadow palette. Next up, we have this one from Profusion, and this is the first Profusion palette I've bought in a while. This is the Marigold eyeshadow palette. This was just okay. I was actually expecting something more, but it's just okay. I want to say I paid about $15 for this eyeshadow palette, but to be honest, I'd rather have the $15 back. There is some pressed glitter in here. There's quite a few. There's one, two, three, four. There's five different pressed glitters. The color story is really pretty. I mean, I'll give it that. That is the best thing about this palette, but this is definitely not one of Profusion's best eyeshadow palettes. I haven't tried like those five pan eyeshadow palettes that they have, but I've heard that those five pan palettes 
palettes are really, really good. I think there's an emerald one that a lot of people talk about. So the next time I'm at Walmart, I'm definitely going to be on the lookout for that one. But as far as these larger palettes go, I mean, I think they're hit or miss. And this marigold one was definitely a miss for me. And finally, we have yet another BH Cosmetics collaboration palette and this is from the doja cat collection this is a mega eyeshadow palette now i will say when comparing this to these little iggy eyeshadow palettes this is way better than these are but still this is not that amazing bh cosmetics quality the matte shades are really good the matte shades are the best thing about this eyeshadow palette but the shimmer shades are definitely not the shimmer shades that we're used to seeing from bh cosmetics um you really have to work to build them up and then when you do build them up they don't shine as much they're not as shimmery as sparkly as uh, i think some of us would like at least what i would like um um, but I do love the colors they included. I mean, it's a fun color story. Again, if you love colorful makeup uh, and you find this on sale, then yeah, maybe. Maybe you don't want an intense shimmer shade. And if that's the case, and this is definitely a good palette for you to check out, especially because the matte shades that are in here, they are pretty decent. Like, they're, they're pretty good. I will give it that. But again, I really felt BH Cosmetics could have done so much better with these collaborations. Guys, for me, the best thing out of this entire collection were the blush trios and I want to say there was like three or four different palettes released I picked them all up I wear them I love them hands down the best thing out of the collection this one is something that you can skip all right guys we've now entered the top 10 best palettes of 2021 this was indeed the hardest category to choose especially because I didn't give any honorable mentions I wanted to just keep it right at 10 so let's get started with the palette that I currently have on my eyes. I think a lot of you will probably agree with me on this palette being one of the best of the best in 2021, and it is the Rose Quartz palette from Huda Beauty. This palette almost didn't happen for me. I honestly had no intentions of buying it I had no intentions of like reviewing it or anything. I kind of just felt the color story was been there, done that. I just didn't get excited about it when I saw it released. It wasn't until I watched a few of my favorite YouTubers that I decided, you know what, that palette looks gorgeous. I think I need to pick it up. I did, I waited for the Sephora VIB sale, so I was able to get the 20% off. And holy cow, guys, this palette is so special. Yes, it kind of looks a little unassuming. You probably think, man, I have those shades already in other palettes. But when you get it home in person, it is just so much prettier in person than it is like what the photos show on uh, the Sephora website and all of that. Once you start playing with like these duochromes and multi-chromes in here, I mean, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous palette. I am so glad to see that Huda did these special shades and I hope she continues to do more. I hope she continues to do more you know, colorful palettes. Um, I know this is still a little bit colorful but it's also very neutral but I think she did a great job with it formula wise and just the overall packaging. I think this is a really nice one from Huda Beauty and if you haven't tried the brand in a while like eyeshadow palette wise this would be a nice one to add to your stash before the year is over. Next up is a collaboration palette from one of my new favorite indie makeup brands, a brand that I really think stood out in 2021. They definitely gave us a lot of amazing products. I'm talking about Wooden's Eye and I'm talking about the Fancy Face collaboration palette. This is the Hummingbird palette. Now this is Tina. She is also known as the Fancy Face on her socials. She collaborated with Wooden's Eye and two other beauty YouTubers, one of them being Annette, the other one being Judy, and they were part of the legendary Diversa collection. This was the palette that she created and this is beautiful i love this color story so so much i picked up all three eyeshadow palettes and i hesitated to put them all together to like bundle them all i really just again wanted to keep this to 10 eyeshadow palettes and this is the one i chose of the three this is beautiful. I love that these are deeper tones. They're jewel tones. I mean, you have a beautiful uh, multi-chrome duochrome down here. 
beautiful this is a beautiful palette i think it is still in stock i think the only one that is out of stock and unfortunately none of them will be restocked is the giant wolves palette which is the collaboration with annette from annette's makeup corner but i do think you can still find this one and a uh, judy's palette which is the red dragon palette love that one as well that's a little bit more neutral in color story those should still be available on the wood inside website this was a fantastic release. I am so happy. I didn't know Tina. I didn't know who the fancy face was. I follow her now. I watch her videos. Amazing girl, beautiful palette, and congratulations to all three ladies who are able to collaborate on this fantastic collection. Keeping on the indie makeup brand theme, and you're going to see quite a few indie makeup brands here in this top 10 list. We have this one from Nomad Cosmetics. This is the Haunted Europe palette. Like I can keep doing this with the holographic all day long. This is such a unique color story. This was their Halloween release, their fall release for 2021. I love the variants of tone. We have cool tones, we have some warm tones. I think if you enjoy working with cool toned eyeshadow palettes, this is one you need to add to your stash. I have not checked to see if it is still in stock. It might be, it might be, and if it is, of course, they will all be linked regardless of whether they are in stock or not in the description box of today's video. I think I've done four looks with this, three or four looks, but this was a fantastic palette to work with no problems whatsoever typical great nomad cosmetics quality this is another brand that i have been really loving in 2021 i think was 2021 the year i tried nomad i could have tried them in late 2020 but i've definitely stepped up my nomad game in 2021 i am so happy to have this palette in my stash it's just so unique it's so unique and again i love the variance in tone with cool and warm i think nomad did a great job with this palette okay so speaking of Annette from Annette's makeup corner we have her very first collaboration palette landing in the top 10 this is her collaboration with menagerie cosmetics and this is the serenity eyeshadow palette guys this palette was very very limited as far as stock they really didn't produce a lot of these palettes I want to say they could have maybe done 2,000 units 3,000 units I was fortunate enough to been able to order it on its launch day as soon as it launched and um, I was able to get it the first go round. This was her very first eyeshadow palette collaboration and as you can tell it's definitely not going to be her last. She did that amazing collaboration with Uden's Eye but this one I am sure is extra special to her heart and it is extra special to me. I have been a fan of Annette for quite some time and I think this palette embodies everything she is as far as like her makeup style, her techniques, the shades that she loves to wear um, I just I love this palette I love all of the the shades that she included I love the nice mixture of mattes and shimmer shades in here it's just a fun palette to work with I love the cover art as well and I love especially that it is an indie makeup brand because Annette always supports indie makeup brands so it makes great sense that her first collaboration eyeshadow palette collaboration and it makes perfect sense that her first eyeshadow palette collaboration would be with one of her favorite brands menagerie cosmetics okay so next i'm sure is a palette that's gonna make a lot of y'all's top 10 lists it is definitely making mine this was my very first experience with the brand and it has not been my last as you have seen here on my channel Hello Wilderness. How many of you guys are including this in your own top 10 list? This is the By Beauty Bay brand Wilderness Eyeshadow Palette. Oh, this is a dream come true. This was my very first time trying the By Beauty Bay brand and I still need to do a Beauty Bay haul. That is something I have on my to-do list because I know a lot of you are watching me. You guys are in Europe. You guys are in Asia or Australia. You're not able to necessarily get all of the products that I show here on my channel and I'm so sorry for that. I know shipping is like crazy right now, um, but I wanna buy from 
across the pond because I want to be able to showcase some makeup that a lot of you can get over there in Europe, in the UK, and wherever you're at minus the USA. Because here in the US, thank God, I mean, we're fortunate enough to be able to get like almost anything. I know a lot of you, especially like in Canada, you're not able to get a lot of the same things we are. And that makes me so sad because I, I want you guys to be able to, to share in the fun, to share in the love of the makeup that I'm showing you guys. Um, so it's definitely on my list. I definitely want to do a beauty bay haul. That way I can try makeup from your neck of the woods and I'm sure I'm going to love it but this was a fantastic release from Beauty Bay. I mean, they followed it up with the Age of Opulence palette. That palette, spoiler alert, I didn't include it in the top 10. That is an amazing palette. I mean, it's up there. It is up there on my list. This color story though just speaks to me so much. I love the green, I love the blue, I love the combination of a little bit of the red. This is definitely an earth themed eyeshadow palette, hence the name Wilderness. The matte shades are so, so pigmented and these shimmer shades are amazing. Like for 20 bucks, and I think this is still in stock, for $20, you guys definitely need to check this out. Out. If you haven't, if you've been on the fence about it, I am here to tell you this is a winner. Next I have another Uden's Eye eyeshadow palette and it is this little cutie right here. This is the Saga Freya Cat's Breath eyeshadow palette. This palette, okay, first let's look at the cover art. Let's give an appreciation to look at the cover art on it. Look at the kitty, how cute. But this color story is so awesome. I love it. I've told you guys this before. This went with me on summer vacation and I actually created um, an eye look on the airplane because I'm a nervous flyer. This was the eyeshadow palette that I pulled out that I used and I got so many compliments on that look. I have since recreated that look and like worn it to work and stuff and I still get the same great compliments. So that means this palette is a good one. If I'm getting complimented on my eyeshadow by strangers, that means there is something special about this palette and I think the little kitty on the front definitely makes it extra special. I love the combination of the orange and the green and teal in there, like the mint color. The shimmer shades are great. The mattes are fantastic. And I love this little book style. I hope Uden's Eye continues to do this little book style the way they did it with the Fancy Face palette, the Hummingbird palette, and the way they did it with all three palettes in this particular collection. I think it's so cute. It's really nice to display. And again, Uden's Eye, Uden's Eye, I think had a fantastic year and it is definitely an indie makeup brand that I am going to look forward to adding more of in 2022. Next, we have a ColourPop eyeshadow palette, a recent ColourPop eyeshadow palette that totally took me by surprise. And I'm talking about this one right here. This is the Ticket to Dreamland eyeshadow palette. This was launched first on the Ulta Beauty website and it has since already been released on the ColourPop website. There were two palettes released in this collection. Um, I forget what the other one is called. I didn't pick that one up. It was a little too toned down for my taste. This is the one I went with and this color story is so amazing. It's so special. Once you get it home and start playing with it, start creating looks, you're going to find that you're going to create very unique looks with this palette. I love that we have a pop of gray in here. I love that we have like this um, teal shade here, this nice gold shimmer. There's no pressed glitter in here. I just think everything coordinates really well. One of the looks I created with this palette, I incorporated the gray along with the pink tones and I love that. I love gray and pink together. I think that is such a beautiful color combination and this just totally took me by surprise. This is a really nice palette. This is a really good palette from ColourPop. Really great quality on this one and I love the artwork on it too. It's just a nice one. I think it might be on sale at the ColourPop website. I don't think it's on sale at Ulta but I would definitely add this to your stash before it's gone forever. Okay next we have a BH Cosmetics eyeshadow palette and this is the Passion in Paris palette. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous eyeshadow palette. For me, I like this palette so much more than the Blueberry Muffin eyeshadow palette. That one was released in 2020. This just has the tones that I'm looking for. This one just has more of like the greens and the blues, um, and you have a little bit of the red down here, the maroon. 
there's just something so special. I think this palette goes a little bit deeper than the Blueberry Muffin palette does. Um, I just love this one. I had so much fun this summer using this palette. And this was a summer release, but this is definitely a great great winter eyeshadow palette. I mean, you can use this palette all year round. Let me tell you, I don't reserve one uh, shade or one tone for one specific time of year. I use all colors, all shades, all year round. This is a gorgeous palette from BH Cosmetics. I think this costs $17 or $18. Um, if you don't have this one, guys, I would add this to your stash ASAP. I have never been to Paris, but I have said this before. I really think this embodies Paris. Paris in the winter. What do you guys think? If you've been there, let me know what you think about this color story. And if you think it represents Paris at any time of year. All right, I have two palettes left. And guys, I forgot to mention this earlier, but these palettes are in no particular order, which is why I'm not putting like a number down here or saying a number. These are just top 10 in general. I know this next palette is gonna make a lot of y'all's top 10 lists. I actually did a giveaway with this eyeshadow palette towards the beginning of the year. This is a collaboration palette with one of my all-time favorite beauty YouTubers. This is the Club Nebula palette, which is a collaboration with Kaleidos and Angelica. This is a beautiful, beautiful eyeshadow palette. I mean, this screams Angelica. If you're familiar with her channel, with all of the gorgeous makeup looks she creates, you know that this is definitely designed by her. You can definitely tell with these shades right here. She loves wearing these shades together. She loves her blues and her greens. She loves depth. And she loves eyeshadow palettes that go from light to medium to dark and there is a lot of variation in this eyeshadow palette i mean if you're familiar with the kaleidos formula you know that it is top notch this palette also came with a deck of cards which i have the deck of cards displayed behind me i have yet to use them i haven't played cards in a very long time hopefully that's something i can do over the holidays but um this was a limited edition palette it was restocked twice i believe and i think the final restock was like in april or may so if you have this palette treasure it hold on to it the cover art is beautiful this is also a palette i do keep on display behind me and I'm so happy for Angelica. This was her first eyeshadow palette collaboration and what better brand for her to do it with than Kaleidos. And last but not least, another indie makeup brand eyeshadow palette, also another collaboration. I mean, this palette is definitely gonna make a lot of y'all's top 10 lists. I already know because this girl had probably the best year out of all of us. And I'm talking about Michaela. Michaela and Glamlight. This is her, holy cow, her gorgeous eyeshadow palette. Yes, it is a large eyeshadow palette. We definitely have a lot of options here. I'm here for it. I love it. I have always been a huge fan of Glamlight ever since the Pizza palette came out. It seems like I've been buying almost all of their releases, which I did buy the two Icy palettes, and those are already on their way to me, so I can't wait to create looks using those two palettes for you guys. Hopefully, maybe over the weekend, um, I'll get them and, and I'll have that video up for you guys soon. This palette, I said it in the video, my review video over it, I think this could be the best palette that Glamlight has ever turned out. And they've turned out some amazing eyeshadow palettes. I mean, the Happy Hour collection, on point. But there was just something special about this Michaela collaboration. This was the only thing I was able to pick up from the collaboration. A lot of things sold out like that. I have been on the fence about ordering the highlighter. I probably should have ordered the highlighter when I ordered the two um, Icy palettes but this is the main thing. This is the star of the show. This palette, um, she explained all of the shade names and why she arranged the shades the way she did. She said she wanted to start with neutral because she knows a lot of people out there, again, don't really go for these colorful of shades on an everyday basis. So she didn't really want to start colorful. She wanted to start more neutral and then just gradually work into the color. I think the layout is fantastic. I mean, there's just so many options with this palette, but the formula is impeccable. Guys, I seriously think this is 
is one of the best Glam Light Cosmetics eyeshadow palettes that I've ever tried. If you are on the fence about it, I wouldn't wait too long because I'm not too sure if this is a limited edition. I don't know how long it's going to hang around, but this is definitely something if you're familiar with Michaela, she's a TikTok star, now she's an Instagram star, now she's just a big star here in the beauty community, um, and you like Glam Light, Add this to your stash ASAP. You will not regret this 110%. It is a fabulous palette. All right, guys, so that wraps up the top 10 best and worst eyeshadow palettes in my stash for 2021. I have definitely tried my fair share of eyeshadow palettes this year. Guys, y'all know, next to foundation, eyeshadow palettes are one of my most favorite things to do here on my channel. I have so many videos creating so many looks. Um, and you know what, guys? Like, practice makes perfect. I feel like over the years and over the videos that I've done, I feel like I'm getting a little bit better and better with each video. I'm definitely trying new techniques. I'm trying to mix new shades together. Together. I mean, it's just all part of the fun and I'm so fortunate that I've been able to try all of the palettes that I did I didn't want to do a video where I was ranking every eyeshadow palette that I tried um, in 2021 because let's be honest like that is gonna just take me hours to do and I'm a little short on time these days but um, I definitely wanted to do a top 10 best and worst and I hope you guys enjoyed watching today's video I hope some of your favorites made it into my top 10 list and I'm wondering if we had some of the worst palettes in common. You're definitely going to have to let me know what your best and worst favorite eyeshadow palette was from this year. What did I not include? What am I missing out on? Just sound off in the comments down below. Let me know what I'm missing. Let me know what I still need to try. Guys, I cannot wait to see what 2022 has in store for us. I am so excited for the indie makeup brand releases. I mean, the indie brands are really coming hard for those high-end beauty brands and they just keep beating them time and time again. I am just so excited to see what Uden's Eye has, what Kaleidos has, what BH Cosmetics has. I mean, I'm always excited for ColourPop. Um, there's just so many brands, so many brands that I'm looking forward to trying and new brands. I definitely want to do a video um, where I want to showcase brands that I want to try in 2022. So that will definitely be done before the year is over. So be on the lookout for that. But that is all for today, guys. I want to thank you all so much for watching another one of my videos you all have a great day or night wherever it is you all are at stay hydrated guys drink that water and i will see you all very soon bye